This edition of Computer Club Lesson was recorded on January the 30th, 2017. This week we talk about fake news. Hello, welcome to Computer Club Lesson. This episode is brought to you by the Binary Guys. Afternoon, folk. It's uh, one o'clock and time to start again. Uh, today, James and I are going to talk to you about something that's become very important over the last few months. And the subject is fake news. Um, how many here know what fake news is? Yeah. Fake. Yeah, that's it. Fake news defined is news that is disseminated with the intent to fool you. Yeah. Okay? No, with the intent to fool you. Sounds like Trump. <laughs> yeah, he's got a lot of it going on too, but we'll talk about him. Um, you would be surprised, shocked, amazed at just how much fake news is out there. And you might even be shocked and amazed at how many times you've read something that you thought was plausible and was completely fake. And therein lies the problem with fake news. A lot of it is plausible. And so it's very easy to fool you. The... the um, some of the best major news outlets, what they call the mainstream media, have been fooled over and over and over again by these fake news stories. And then they pass them on to you. Feed them up. You gobble them down. And your whole attitude about the world has been changed because you consumed this fake news. The one that James and I talked about this morning um, could have been um, really, really tragic. How many here have heard about the guy that went to Washington DC from North Carolina and shot up a pizzeria? Pizza Gate. Something, a little bit something about it? Yeah. Okay, here's the story. A gentleman from North Carolina was cruising around the internet for months and months and months, not much else to do, and he kept coming across these stories about child sex slaves being farmed out by well-respected uh, political operatives of the Democratic Party from a pizzeria in East Washington, D.C. He kept seeing them every day, every day, every day. He would see this stuff. One fine day, he decided to do something about it because from all of his reading, no one was doing anything about it. So he got out every automatic weapon that he had, and he had quite a few, being from North Carolina and a bit of a gun nut, loaded up his car and went to Washington. Found this place on Google Maps, got out his AR-15 or whatever it was, went into the pizzeria and shot the place up. Shot the place up. If anybody had confronted him, he would have happily blown them to hell. 
after he roamed around in there for a few minutes and not found anything of consequence, he went outside and promptly surrendered to police, who showed an enormous amount of restraint and not blowing him to hell. So there he sits in jail now for a couple of, couple of months. And to this day, his initial statement to the police was, well, I guess my intel on this was a little bit wrong. Maybe I got the wrong address. To this day, he believes that story. And he's not alone. He's not alone in that. Now you sit here and think to yourselves, that's freaking nuts! And it is. How could anybody fall for that? Here's why people like this fellow fall for that. We're all the same in this, in that we live in these little silos that we build for ourselves. And inside of our little silo is everything we know about the world and everything we believe about the world. And if someone comes along and says to us in our little silo, your belief may not be quite right, if you're that kind of a person, you'll punch him in the nose and kick his ass out of your silo. You don't want to hear it. Because inside of there, you're safe and warm. And that's why these things progress the way they do. In, in this instance, which is really, really crazy, can, can we say that this guy was really, really crazy? No, we can't. We can say that he, he has muddled thinking and probably of his own doing. But is he crazy? No. Any one of us, any one of us can fall for fake news. Because in a lot of cases, in a lot of cases, there's a kernel of truth in it inside of our little silo that we build for ourselves. We, we make truths about the world around us and then we let in those truths that happen to coincide with what we believe. And boy, can that ever make trouble. <laughs> so, how do we know when we're being poleaxed by fake news? Do we know every time? No. Not every time. And it only takes one or two times to start changing the way you perceive the world. Um, it's unfortunate, but that's human nature, and people are preying on that. So when you read things on the internet, and sometimes even when you hear things on television news at 6 o'clock, there may be some fake news in there too, and there's a reason for it. Let's uh, examine that reason for just a minute. The news business is not about giving you the day's news in a form that you can understand. That's not what the news business is about. The news business is about servicing the advertisers of the news. That's what it's about. Providing them with eyeballs for their commercial interruptions. That's what the news is for. And don't let a newsman tell you any different because his editorial chief will punch him in the nose, fire him, and get somebody who knows what's really going on. So, with that in mind, perhaps something comes along through um, all of the 
news outlets that are at hand for, say, CTV News in their national newsroom. And they get feeds from the Associated Press, from Reuters, from the big, um, the big networks in the United States and Europe and Asia, and they get this stuff from everywhere. And the, if they don't check themselves, if they rely on, say, Reuters to provide trustworthy news, and they just go with the, with the Reuters feed, and it's called rip and read, you, you rip it off the, uh, off the computer it came in on, plonk it down in front of the news reader's face and say, read this. Rip and read. They don't, they don't check. They haven't got time. They're not going to take a whole day or two to run down an iffy story until they're satisfied that it's true. We've got, we, we've got one source. Good enough. Good enough. Whether the source is good enough or not is quite another story. We've got a source. They go with it. And you, unfortunately, listening to the evening news, get taken in by it. Okay? And that can be anything from um, international news to local news. It's all the same to the, to the editorial board of the news organization you're listening to or reading. Get the news out there quick because our advertisers want eyeballs. It's too bad. What can you do about it? Nothing. Except be aware and informed that fake news can happen, it can affect you, it can affect your outlook on life, it can change the politics that you believe in, it can change the neighbors that you believe in, it can change everything. If you act on fake news, it can change everything. And maybe for the worse. Now, if anybody has been watching the news over the last couple, three weeks, you've got to ask yourself, if the leader of the free world <laughs> is listening to fake news, and making policy on it, what does that mean for us? Is he doing it? It's hard to say. It really and truly is. Because this fellow lives in his own silo. Okay? And he surrounded himself with like-minded people who tell him things. And those things could be wrong. They could be dangerous. They could be deadly. We don't know what this gentleman actually truly believes. He's never told anybody. It's only been ten days. Ten long days. Ten long days, Freddie. I'm gonna sit there and watch him. <laughs> but the other part of the other piece of this story is okay. President Trump might be crazier than a shit house rat. We don't know. But here's one thing for sure. That the people that are opposed to him, they are going to crazy town as well. Okay? Some of them are living in crazy town. 
we got a couple here in Canada. Now. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking for the USA. Yeah, yeah. Got one in Toronto. Yep. The the liberal or conservative, it doesn't matter. If if your silo, the one you live in, the one you look out to the world from, um, has been altered by fake news, and let's say it's made you angry or upset. Um, you can you can be told a hundred facts, but if if you have this belief in your silo. A hundred facts don't mean nothing. They don't. The only thing you're going to listen to is what is is what your own silo will let in. Okay? And that may be just opinion. No facts here, just opinion. And in the last while, opinions have become Facts. Opinions have become facts. Facts have become opinions. Um, I'm just going to rest on one other little thing, and then we'll we'll leave this alone. I know because I'm on a rant here. <laughs> Over the last. Since last weekend, um, a poor lady who may have misspoke, it's hard to say, maybe she did and maybe she didn't, and used the words alternate facts. And somebody in that instance jumped all over her and said, Kellyanne, alternate facts are not facts, they're lies. Okay, let's talk about that for just a minute. Just a minute. Also, this is what going where I think it's going. It's going to be a sensitive subject. Yeah, but uh, I will, let's preface that by saying that I'm going to say some sensitive things here, but uh, you can take them as you would. Alternate facts. Is an alternate fact a lie? Now, let's take a very important public discussion that's been going on now for 30 years. And it's, as far as these public discussions go, some say it's settled law and others say it's not. The people that believe in right to life and the people that believe in women's choice which one of those two groups is working with alternate facts which one it's in the eye of the beholder isn't it they both have valid fact that they can go to because they've been working this problem for 30 years. How dare anyone from the news media say that if I have a fact that you don't have, my fact is a lie. How dare they? And this guy is getting away with it, and getting away with it, and getting away with it. And it jumped all over the rest of the, the news world that this is the way it is. An alternate fact is a lie. No one, no one that I have seen in the last week has said, wait a minute. I know some facts and some alternate facts that are not lies. But because everybody wants to, um, what's the word I'm going to look for? Um, what they want to do to this poor lady is destroy her. I don't even know who she is. 
Kellyanne Conway. She's she's one of uh, President Trump's mouthpieces. <laughs> but the mainstream news media in the United States, let's face it, as to what they are, they are liberal and left leaning. That's a fact. That's not an alternate fact. That's a fact. Um, but even the right-leaning media in the United States has not come to her defense in this. And that is a bit of a problem for me because of these alternate facts that we know to be true. And no one, no one to this point has said, yeah, there are alternate facts in this world that are not lies. Okay. A simple example would be, is a zebra white with black stripes? Or is it black with white stripes? Yeah, exactly. Both are true. But one's going to be an alternate fact at some point here. Okay, that's my rant. It's over. <laughs> we like sugar-coated news. That's, our that's your problem. That's your silo. That's your silo. Like but how are, we, how are we going to absorb? We do want to absorb. We just can't go on being this level of, of intelligence or information. Good, good question. How, how, how can we go on listening to this stuff and divine for ourselves what seems to be true and what's not? It's a difficult task. Um, one of them, one of the ways of doing it. Means do your own research. Yeah, it says do your own research. Now, sometimes that can be difficult um, to get at the facts that someone uh, may be trying to hide from you. So, perhaps the best thing to do is to put that story in the back of your mind for a day or two and then go back and start researching all of the news outlets that you can find on this story and see if they all, to some degree or other, agree. Because if half of them agree and half of them don't, you may be looking at fake news. Because the words fake news now have become a weapon. Ah, that mutt don't know what he's talking about. It's all fake news from them. Trump did it. He stood there in front of a bunch of reporters and said, You're fake news. I'm not taking your question. <laughs> okay. Um, so he used those that term as a weapon. And a lot of other people are using it too as a weapon. The term was, to my, to the best of my knowledge, because um, I'm a big time news geek, was first used uh, by um, a CNN anchor um, who was trying to put some perspective on what news might be a lie and what news might be true. And so he used those two words, fake news. And after a little digging, he found many, many, many places on the internet where the news was fake um, and not true and designed by his definition to fool you. It wasn't out there to, to change your opinion. It was there to fool you. Maybe you know this. You want to go to England? <laughs> yeah. We talked about it. I don't want to go to England. <laughs> oh, yeah. What's wrong with England? <laughs> Piltdown man. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I remember that. Piltdown man. When, when did that start? In the 20s, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. It was in the oh. 20s. Yeah. A discovery yeah, was, yourself, yeah, <laughs> uh, and it lasted until the early 50s, 30 years. 
yes, because we was they found out about it when I not long after I started school. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Brenda and I know about Piltdown Man, and we're going to let you in on the secret. Piltdown Man was a supposed discovery in Britain of what was then called the missing link. The link in anthropology between ape and man. Discovered in Britain. Yeah, fancy that. Fancy that. Where there's no monkeys to be inside. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I say, I don't come from monkeys. <laughs> The missing link in anthropology between ape and man. There was, there was always this gap in the record of that jump between a full-on ape and a human. In any event, the discovery was made uh, stories written, careers were made, big time careers. In British science, if you have a career in science, you are at, at you're at the top of the world. Yeah, uh, I mean you, you've got the Royal Society. Okay, if you're a member of the Royal Society, you are somebody. And a discovery like Piltdown Man can make you with the Royal Society, and that's exactly what happened. This fellow, this landowner, was uh, digging up for some reason or other. He's making a foundation or digging up a garden or something. And his, uh, um, his laborer, found a piece of a skull. And eventually the skull made its way to uh, an amateur anthropologist who looked at it and said this may be something and so he took it to the Royal Society where they examined it and promptly um, declared that it was the missing link. I think it was in the early 20s. And that happened. For 30 years, 30 years, um, the mine was salted a little bit with a bone here and a bone there. <laughs> and for 30 years, this went on. Until one day, a newly minted anthropologist from one of the great British universities, I think it was Oxford, I'm not sure, uh, took a look at the bones of Piltdown Man and within a minute had deci deciphered that they were all fake. Every single one of them was a fake. And careers were destroyed. The emperor had no clothes. But the original discovery of Piltdown Man was what we can call fake news. Designed to fool you. Now the, the reasons behind it were varied and to this day nobody really has a good handle on why the, the hoax was perpetrated but the fact is it was a hoax that went on for 30 years. How many more of them are out there? We don't know. We don't know. Okay. Uh, the end of fake news. Any questions? It, it kind of reminds me of what my dear old mother told me years ago. What's that? Don't believe everything you hear, yeah. half of what you see. That's right. <laughs> if it's too good to be true, you know that. Yep. There you go. All right, so uh, we've taken up the best part of half an hour with. Uh, Fake news. Talk about why websites make fake news. Oh yeah, why do they why do they make fake news? Okay, uh, it's all about the money. Yeah. It's all about the money. No matter what it is It um, these stories get planted out there, planted out there, planted out there, 
and eventually someone will run across them and put them on they want to share so they'll put them on a Facebook page or they will tweet them out to their friends look what I found Click, 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 click. Well, what oh. they heard the same noise in the village. Didn't yeah. you know? Yeah. Every, every click is money. And these things get passed around like nobody's business because um, a lot of times the news is sensational with a small grain of truth in it. With a small grain. Extremely small. But a small grain of truth. It's not like Tony's. You don't have any truth in it. <laughs> Let's be nice, Fred. Let's be nice. Well, that's true. <laughs> okay. That's why. It's all about the money. Okay. Which, in, in internet terms, um, you'll always, we call them clickbait uh, news, which will bait you into clicking them. Yeah, you'll see a headline. Oh, yeah. Damn, that's interesting. Click. <laughs> Somebody got paid. Yeah. Somebody got paid. Especially on Facebook, on the side there. Right? Yeah. They're, they're there all the time. Which is why. with the phone calls you get. So yeah. As soon as you answer that phone yeah. call, he gets paid. Yeah. If you ignore it, he don't get paid. Yep. Yeah, but does it matter if I click and read the story? Nine times out of ten, I don't believe it. It just caught my eye, so I'll read it. It mean anything. I don't care if somebody If you go that. in with that attitude, you're perfectly fine. And maybe it's great for a laugh. Some off. You'll laugh and laugh and laugh. Maybe it's great for that. And if you go in with that attitude, great for you. Okay. But there are others. There are others that um are not as worldly as Brenda <laughs> and do take things to heart do take things to heart like a, another famous example would be back with um, the release of uh, Apple's iPhone 4 which uh, there were fake news going around that the release of this phone would be moved to like almost the end of the year instead of the beginning and in 15 minutes um, Apple's stock worth dropped down 14 million dollars in fi 15 minutes and that's when they were just a small company yeah that yeah, they, they, they yeah. They they uh, they move fourteen million dollars on the uh, on a tenth of a point now on the stock exchange, but back then it was big time. And we talked about this a couple a couple of years ago, um, and I'll just remind you of it. Um, someone got a hold of somebody's Twitter account and posted a story on Twitter that uh, President Obama had been shot and the White House had been bombed. Remember that? Way, way back. Okay. He'd been shot and the White House had been bombed. The stock market fell 20% in two minutes. In two minutes it went. And then he bought stock right away. And somebody either made money on the way down or money on the way back up again. We don't know. But it was a wild fluctuation of 20 points in just a couple of minutes. As a matter of fact, in a couple of seconds. So there's your fake news for you. Okay. Questions about other things? Do we have other things to make questions on today? Yes. I have one. Yes. When I try to open um, an attachment, I get on that the little page it says how you want to open it. And Twainy or whatever comes up. Twain. Yeah. T-W-A-I-N. Okay. Um, Twain is the driver um, for the scanner in your printer. Oh, my scanner? 
Yeah, um, and I don't know why Twain would would be in that list, other than um, what um, the file extension might be PNG. You know what the file extension is of the thing you're trying to open? Name dot something. Dot something is the file extension. It's usually three letters. Uh, try and divine what that is. Just hover over the attachment. Just hover over it with your mouse, and it should uh, the name should pop up with the full file extension there. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I got you now. Where I'm looking. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, and that file extension is a clue on how the computer wants to open this document. It may not have the right program, and so it's asking you to install install a program or if the program is on your computer to choose that program but you won't know that until you figure out what the file extension is you can ask me about it the next time we meet or send me an email once you've got that file extension I'll tell you what opens it okay yes okay what is your problem I can get all kinds of emails in but I can't you can't answer anything. Um, okay, that may be a problem. Um, uh, are you trying to send out with Rogers or, are you try, or, or Source or with Source? Yeah, okay. Uh, and what email package are you using? Incredible. Incredible. All right, that may be the problem. Um, if you. Um, the fix for this might be open up in Credimail and under the Windows uh, um, across the top in your file menu you'll see Windows or, or about Windows or something like that. Click on that and you'll get a drop down box um, and one of the, the um, one of the choices that you may have in that drop down box is check for update. I've done that. I got an update from them and everything, but they and then they sent me something. I told I tried to get through to them that I couldn't, you know. Yeah. But you stuff. can't because <laughs> you haven't got email. <laughs> no, no. And it, they uh, when it first started, I um, I printed off the whole page. I should have brought it with me, and it showed you to go into the computer itself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, that's that's something that if you want it to work, I would have to look at. Or the other thing that you can do is just uh, ignore Incredimail. And um, yeah, yeah. Um, well, it's that would be something that I would have to come to your house and look at uh, to see if I could get it working again. Um, it's hard to say. Uh, do you have another email package on your computer? Well, like, I can say I can go to, to Gmail. Yeah, you can use Gmail. Um, or you can log right in through uh, Source Cable and log right into their webmail. Yeah, you have to know your password, right, um, for, for, for your, your Source Cable uh, email. You have to know your password. Um, but you can do that. How would you know a password? You've never used it. Um, well, here again, if you don't know what your password is, that's something that I would have to try and divine what it is. I can do that. I have I have a program that that will do that. Um, but now it's back to me to get it working for you. What's an SMTP? S SMTP uh, is the Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, and it's either. Um, uh, it's either, it's probably not. Um, it's probably got a bad setting in it somewhere. Something is missing out of the SMTP protocol that it needs to talk to source cable. It could be something as simple as as the wrong port number or something like that. It's hard to say, um, but it usually means simple mail transfer protocol. It's not talking to to um, the servers correctly, yeah. and that's why you can't send. Okay, thanks. Yes? Talking about mail and sending mail. Yeah, I'm on Yahoo. Yep. Yahoo had uh, 
a new version sort of thing, and they kept bugging me to take it, so I did. Now, I can't forward anything, I can't print anything from any email that I get. If I print it, I get my whole page with my yeah. thing. And uh, when, when the page comes up, it's like one page imposed on another. Yeah. What, uh, you, you might be able to change it back in settings. In settings? Yes. Go into settings. And um, it might be under how your, your uh, it's probably under how uh, Yahoo Mail essentially looks and feels. And there may be a setting in there to change it back to the old way. What do I look for in settings? I don't use Yahoo, so I don't know. But there will be something in there that will give you, uh, and you can go in on. Yahoo settings? Yes, in Yahoo, Yahoo settings. Oh, okay. Okay. When you log into Yahoo, there will be a settings there in your email. Um, maybe not saying change back, but um, go back to your old settings or something like that. You can look that up uh, with a Google search. Um, uh, yeah, uh, rev revert to old settings Yahoo, and that should give you something. Okay. Um, I have Firefox. You have Firefox? Yeah. Uh, let me just. I should be able to bring this up for you. Under Tools. Under Options. The reason that you have MSN coming up is that on this line home page you have msn.com. You can highlight that, change it to google.com or anything you want. And that's under general? Yeah, under the general tab. And all I put in there is Firefox? No, no, you, you uh, under... When Firefox starts. Sure. Yeah, when Firefox starts, um, you go to tools, okay, tools, and then options. And the options page will bring this up, change msn.com to whatever you like. Okay, thanks. Right? Yeah. Okay, your question. All right, you came and found I have that problem with my sound Yes. and recommended the new speakers which yeah. I bought. I still got the garbled sound. Coming out of the new speakers? <clears throat> I, it's just all the speakers. The, the computer speaker is still active and the sound coming out of the others is picking it up somehow. Okay. Um, before I leave the village today. I will just nip over to your house for a minute. Do you have your car here? Yes. Oh, okay. You you go home yes. ahead of me, and uh, I will be along and have a quick look at it. Make sure you got it all plugged into the right thing in the right way. <laughs> okay. Another question over here was, yes. Can I ask you about the phone? Okay. <laughs> We just got a new phone because Telus said I had to upgrade. Yeah. I did not get a smartphone, I got another flip top. Right. But somebody was telling me that there's such a thing as T word and they showed me on their phone they don't have to go to get to oh. <laughs> ABC, they just press. And it actually writes what they want. It figures out what they're doing. And she says it's called T word. And when she opens her phone, goes to options, presses T word. Don't know. Like she tells the phone to. No, don't talk to it. It's a flip top like mine. Yeah. And she presses option. And in options, it says T word. And so she gets to T word. And then when she showed me, when she wants to write Brenda. You know, it's A, yeah. B, C. Yeah. She just pushes it once. She pushes B, R, E, N, and it 
Okay, I yeah, yeah, I, I see I see what it's doing. It's it's trying to guess out of the ten keys that you have which one you're going to press next. It's just trying to guess. Right? But it saves her a lot of trouble. Yeah. Is it is it something I can get on my phone? I don't know. I don't I don't know what your phone is. Uh, usually um, it's um, you can't install uh, apps on a flip phone. Usually don't not. <laughs> um, so. I just thought it'd be convenient yeah. if I could. Yeah. That's what if it's not there, it's well, not I'll there. Tell you what, I'm picking it up on Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah. Ask the fellow on the desk. I will. Yeah. 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 Okay. Like I say, it's trying to make a guess. Did, yes. No. Well, yes. I have something, but I didn't bring the paper, so okay. I can't. I downloaded Chrome. It tells me thank you for downloading it. It won't open. <laughs> Windows 10? Um, Chrome is how many, the worst. Yeah, how many times have, have you just downloaded it the once to your downloads folder? No. Nope. Took it, put it in, so took it out, put it in again. Because if that well, browser must have missed something. And it still, it tells me, thank you very much for downloading it. Okay, when you... Um, it doesn't show up anywhere. I looked at the programs to see if it was in there. Yeah, it's yeah. so it's, it's not loaded. Um, the only thing that I can think of, um, when, you, uh, when you open up Internet Explorer... You might get a box like this. If you had, if you had that box. And I don't anymore. I used to, and I forget that. She yeah. goes to. Because it would be easy to go. Yeah, that. just like this. Yeah. yeah. The other way that you can do this is um, to uh, get Chrome. No, you don't want the top one. You want the next one down. Oh, okay. All right. That that's that's an advertisement. You don't want that. But then down it says yeah. Chrome web browser. Let's let's click on that. And when you get to this place, you get to download now. After it's downloaded, it should install itself. But I'll try that. Yeah. You know how you minimize and you go to the corner like this isn't to be a thing. This is just when you have something you go on the corner and you show it your page. Yeah. I can't do that. Well that's a star and I don't know what else. Yeah. Um, yeah. So when you click on this this uh, little box in the middle, so you don't get that. Um, let me just try something here. Okay, I'm going to try this. Okay. Yeah, now here's what I did. Here's what I did. And this should work for you. Uh, I grabbed a hold of the, 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 um, the full size window. I grabbed a hold of it right here in the middle with the mouse. And then I dragged that mouse up into the corner. No, say now, that again. You took the square. I took the, 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 the full size window, the full, yeah. full screen window, and I grabbed it right here with the mouse, and I dragged it over to that corner. So you're dragging it from the line. Let me do it again. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to grab a hold of it right here. In a blank spot. In a blank spot. Okay. And I'm going to drag it to that corner. Now you see what it did? Oh yeah. Okay. 
Now, once that has happened, then, then you can resize the window. Oops. You can resize the window to the size you want. Yeah, I, yeah. with your arrows on the edge. Yeah, and once you've done that, now when you minimize the window and bring it back up, it should, re it should come back to the size you made it. Where you left it. Where you left it. Okay, yeah. it, that's what should happen. If that doesn't happen, I think you had that problem. I don't know what problem I've got, yeah. <laughs> 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 Talking about that, then I want to show you, I showed this to, to Jane. This is how mine is. I can't get, I can't get this size bigger. I, I can only move this line, this line I here don't move. Before, I yeah. Never it's a, a it's setting, but I can't find settings on just this penta. And that's with Outlook. Uh, I can't remember. Um, here again, that's... And that's probably yeah. at 75 percent. Yeah. Back. And you can't read it on your screen? Yeah, yeah. I can't. But, but this is too big and that, this is too small. Yeah. You want it? I, tried it. I, I, can, um, I can move this yeah. line and, and move it. Okay. There's, there's a line right here. That can you move that? No, that, that one, one won't move. Okay. Uh, then I don't know how it's going this to... This one will move and take this away, but that's yeah. the best I can do. It. Yeah. Um, I am not exactly sure... How that's going to work because do I don't use Outlook myself. No, it's not going to do like that then. No, no, that's not the same thing. I'm starting to think I need to just install Outlook so I can answer half these questions. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. Now that you have that, sorry. Now yes. that you have that page at the size you want it there, can you uh, change it from the corners? Like I've seen you do it from the corners. Well, once you make or make the page the full size. Like that. Now you can't, you can't resize the page from the corners. You can't do it. Okay, it's not going to let you. Oops, sorry. You have to, you have to bring the page back to that size. Then you can grab it here, grab it here, grab it here, and resize it to the size you like. Right. And once you've done that, it should remain that way. The reason it's disappearing down here. When you when you uh, click on that like that and it goes away completely down here yeah. is for some reason it's hiding itself, and that's the only way to get it back is to use that snap feature, where you, you grab a hold of the page right here and just drag it up into the yeah. corner and it will snap to a quarter the size of the pay, uh, of the screen. From there you can use your mouse to resize the page. Okay. So what were you doing when you made it from the corners? How would you use it that way? Oh, that was just to resize it. That's oh, okay. That's yeah. fine. Yeah, I you can... Else. No. See, if you, if you go down to a corner here, you'll see how the cursor should change. No, yeah. it doesn't because it's all the yeah, way down. Yeah, because it's all the way down. Um, see how the cursor changed? Um, it's a little beyond, but it changed to a diagonal instead of an up and down or side to side. When you have that, uh, when you when you can get that, then you can instead of going this way and this way, you can go that way. Okay. All right. Any other? Um, Bob, I had a quick question. Sure. What does MSN stand for? Microsoft. System. Yeah, I think so. It's MSN. Um, I call it more stupid nothingness. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that works. No, MSN is Microsoft Network. Yeah, that's what it is. Um... I have Thunderbird. I have two active email addresses. I have my webmail and I have my source. Yep. Now I sent, um, um, you know, I usually use my source, um, but I can't send one from source. I send it to my web. So when I sent an email to somebody who had my source email, I went into the sent thing after the next day and it had, it had sent twice. 
the very same time at 1.19 minutes. Yep. It says, is that because it's just telling the two email addresses? Okay. Yep. I have somebody trying to get into me with a bad email. And um, I don't know how. When I got the Windows 10, the new computer, I did not send my contacts from way back when yeah. I source over. They're not existing anymore. Yeah. Somebody sent me an email from my sister who has been dead for six years. I got an email from Jane Jackson. Yeah, how yeah. you're you're going you're going to get that that spam email um, if you if you have uh, an uh, an online uh, email address like Gmail or Yahoo, you are going to get email from yourself. Um, <laughs> you look you contact yeah you 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 look at the source of the email and it says me. Okay. okay, it's email from yourself. Sister, yeah, that's that's just yeah. that's just <laughs> that that address was out there somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh, that's yeah. all it's it is. Open it or it's should you delete it? Oh, don't touch. It. No, no. Oh, no. I don't. I don't. But it, it never went into the new stuff. It's old, old history. Yeah. But it's yeah. because the source is the e the source email address is old and my original. Yeah, yeah. That's okay, why. Okay, so they. Oh, <laughs> and of course, the email is so phony. It's re and colon and nothing. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's just bang delete. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the way you handle that. Yeah. I get emails from Steven Seagal. <laughs> <laughs> you said that. That's right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a dream come you, true. <laughs> yeah. You can, like I said, you can even get them from yourself. I I get them all the time from myself. Okay. Yeah. Okay, any last questions before we wrap it up? Yes? So anyway, I've got two speakers, and if I bring them too close together, they get static and lots of noise. And I keep them separate, but one speaker doesn't work, everything comes out of the other one. <laughs> okay, that... Um, Mono stereo. <laughs> yeah. Um, if, you, if you move the jack around in the computer, do you hear lots of noise coming out of the speakers? Like, lots of static? If you... Jiggle the jack. I jiggle the jack. <laughs> yeah. If you j j jiggle it a bit and you get lots of static out of it, um, that means that it's not making full contact with uh, the internal the internals in the computer. It may be a question of you're pushing it in too far or not far enough. Okay, so you can start by starting up some music uh, or a video or something and just gently push that jack back into the computer. When you hear noise coming out of both computers, you're far enough. Or else it's, it's uh, stuck and it's not in far enough. One or the other. I would go with it's, it's, um, uh, it's in too far. So pull it out and just gently push it in until you get noise out of both speakers. The, uh, That's probably the better way to work it. If, if the speakers are super old and you've twisted the wires a lot, at the end where it connects to the actual speaker, I would recommend wiggling that as well. Because on my speakers, I have to wiggle it into the perfect position so things come out of it. So when you wiggle your jack, you were talking about your own jack. Well, I keep, keep it out of the gutter. the <laughs> I've got one of these old towers. Oh, well, either way, if you if uh, if your speakers are for a laptop, they will be one eighth of an inch like this. Yeah. Okay. And and uh, they either plug into your laptop or plug into your tower, but they, they have that one eighth of an inch jack, and so pull it out and just uh, start some music up or start a video up that you know there's going to be sound out of it. So and then just gently push it in until you you may get sound out of both speakers. It's either pushed in too far or not far enough. Okay, thank you. I have a set of speakers at home that I don't use. Thank you very much. I have a chair that has speakers in it. I think that's it, folks. It's 2 o'clock. Thank you so much. Our next meeting will be in two weeks. That's Computer Club lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.